Thursday at 11 in English and every Thursday at 3 p.m. in Spanish. Um, as a bit of a guide on how to navigate the uh, housing process, um, we've noticed at the FRC, and I'm sure you all have too, that uh, after the eviction moratorium and after for over a year and a half of the pandemic, more and more clients are coming to us with housing needs um, and housing questions. And our two programs, while not dealing with housing directly, are now tasked with uh, understanding a bit more of this process. And so using the information that uh, Jess Yang, our former uh, housing coordinator, put together, Peyton and I will be presenting on the housing search, first starting with how to begin the search itself, addressing barriers, um, talking about how to apply and how to talk with landlords. Um, so today's will be all centered on the different um, housing tools, uh, lottery systems, and, um, and other websites that people can use to look for housing that is for low income folks or below market rate. You can go to the next slide. So as mentioned, we are um, case managers out of the Family Resource Center. Um, so while we are offering this guide to uh, housing, by no means are we trained specifically in housing. So we are open to all information that anyone has, uh, whether in this meeting directly or if any, um, any questions or any information arises after these meetings, we would love for you to reach out to us. These are both of our emails. Um, and we can include them at the end as well, although those in this meeting right now should all have our contact info. But for future reference, this is how to get in touch with us. And Peyton, would you like to take away take it away on this slide? Yeah, sure. Okay, so as Clark said, I'm Peyton. I'm a, also a case manager within the FRC. And so what we're going to be doing is talking about affordable, can you guys hear me? You can hear me, right? Okay, affordable yeah. housing applications. So by affordable housing, um, we don't mean coordinated entry. So with coordinated entry, they can help you get into shelters and stuff. So this workshop is geared towards people that are not eligible for family coordinated entry or those that completed an assessment with family coordinated entry and were determined problem solving status. So they weren't able to be connected to a rental subsidy but it can really apply to anyone just looking generally for affordable housing in San Francisco. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to make that distinction. We're gonna be going over different um, websites you can look for affordable housing on. And some of them are like a lottery based system where you can get below market units um, if you're on a wait list or a lottery. And um, those units, like it's different from a subsidy because with a subsidy you get money and you can search for housing. But with the lottery ones, it's like a specific unit, like a specific property. Um, and then we're also gonna be going over different websites that are also just kind of like community-based where people can post on it, like Craigslist or Facebook and um, the best practices for applying to both of those different types of websites. Is there any questions on that? Cool. All right, so starting from where to look, you can go to the next slide, Peyton. We're going to be starting with uh, Dahlia, uh, which is affordable housing portal run by the office of the San Francisco mayor. Um, there are options for renting and buying. Uh, shows vouchers and subsidies that will be uh, accepted by the property, mostly lotteries. Um, or wait lists. Uh, and just a quick tip on, um, on Dahlia um, as it pertains um, to the uh, uh, lottery and wait list is that things move pretty quick um, and extremely slow. So you can send in uh, an application 
and not hear back for six to nine months and in that time think that they lost your application in the mail or you know it, something got lost in fact it's still in their system things just become available pretty slowly but once it has become available uh, you need to be checking your email frequently because sometimes they only give you between 24 and 48 hours to accept a property that you have been uh, approved for so that can make things really difficult um, especially if you're not someone who has access to the internet all the time or, or working all the time and can't be constantly checking your email but uh, yeah just a quick tip on kind of the timeline for things um, and we'll be actually going through at the end um, and showing kind of how to navigate Dahlia exactly but uh, that's the first one that I think um, people should know about is Dahlia um, because it affect it's affected by uh, your income and family composition um, and they're really great uh, housing lotteries and wait lists to get on. Also quick tip on Dahlia is that you can apply for as many as you can. Um, I had a client recently ask me after we filled out an application for one if she could apply for another one. I said, yep, keep putting those in because um, you want to give yourself as good of a shot to uh, get approved. Um, so yeah, this is what Dahlia looks like. Peyton, you want to take away? Yeah. And just another note on um, like lottery or wait list um, application portals. Natalie, who's our problem solving specialist within the Central City Access Point, also said a, a tip might be um, if you're, one of the families are homeless, is if they're applying for like a below market rate unit, they can go to the Coalition of Homelessness and get a certificate of homelessness to actually attach to their BMR application. Um, that may or may not help. Um, get them up on the wait list, you know, up their status. And there's Clark's tip about lotteries. Okay, so yeah, there's also other um, websites such as Saha, which is Satellite Affordable Housing Associates. And they are also like a lottery wait list type system. Oops, Affordable Housing Online, as seen here, sorry, is, um, is another one that you can look for affordable housing. And it has a mix of both BMR units that are lottery based and then just regular listings. Um, there's a lot of East Bay options like Oakland, Berkeley or Richmond. And these are often a lot more affordable, available and spacious because they're outside of the city. Um, and yeah, so there's a mix. Saha is the waitlist lottery and then affordable housing online is a mix of those. So this is what the affordable housing online website looks like. And Clark will be going through later about how to navigate these websites. Um, yeah, and then as I mentioned, there are other sites um, that are kind of like community based where really anyone can post, right? Like Craigslist or Facebook, Mar Facebook Marketplace. Um, and you can find really good deals on here, but you have to be more careful of scams on these types of websites uh, because they're just regular people. They're not landlords or anything like that. It's free to post and there's no vetting system except for user reports which is people reporting each other. So you just have to be more careful when you're on these more community-based um, websites. So yeah, I'm sure you've all seen this page. This is Craigslist. And um, yeah, there's also apartments, apartments.com and Zillow. So these are like Craigslist and Facebook where you know kind of anyone can post, but you have to pay a subscription fee to list them. So maybe you're less likely to find affordable housing because they may be more expensive because you have to pay, you have to have the money to pay the subscription fee, but they can be more credible than those on Craigslist or Facebook uh, because of the subscription fee. So that's something to note as well. All right, so we'll be leaving it right there for now. Um, and I'm going to attempt to share my screen once again. Although we saw how that went last time. Um, but uh, I'm going to walk us through a few of these portals uh, just to get a better sense for what they look like. Uh, and if at any point anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself. I won't be able to see the chat, um, although Peyton will. 
So you can type in the chat or unmute yourself. There aren't too many of us, so feel free to just speak up. Um, but I'm going to walk us through um, uh, some of the other sites that are navigable. Give me one second. All right. Can any, everyone hear me? Excellent. I'm glad that worked this time. Those ocean waves are really pronounced. Oh, you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, all right. So let's see. So I can get back to it. So can everyone see the Dahlia uh, page up on my up on my screen? Yeah. Excellent. So if we look at the top here, we got uh, English, Spanish, uh, Mandarin, and Filipino and Tagalog support. Uh, so clients who don't speak English as their first language, um, have uh, support and can navigate the site in their preferred language, as long as it's one of these three other ones. Um, for most of what we're talking about, we're looking at renting. So we'll start here uh, by clicking rent. And you can see available uh, units as you scroll down. So waterbed unit 205, and these are all in San Francisco. Um, you can even see here, um, this orange box denotes that it is a senior facility, a senior building, as well as the Junipero Serra house. You can also, on the right side, when it says available units and open wait list, see how many units, how many bedrooms, and then the income price range, um, as well as the rent. So this section here is important um, because with Dahlia, you have to have an income in that range to be able to apply for that unit. So one or both. Uh, Excuse me, sorry to interrupt. I had a question. Yeah. Um, with the income portion part, um, I'm on CalWorks, so I receive the cash aid and the CalFresh. On the income portion, do I include, would I calculate the cash aid and the CalFresh combined it as my income, or is it just the cash aid? Because I've been told by um, some social workers that include it, and then some say don't include it. So Clark, Doom just died. I'm just going to fill him in on your question real quick. So I'm she, back. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Or if, if you want to um, re-ask the question, so Clark can hear you. Sorry okay, so on the income um, part of the application, I'm on CalWorks and I receive cash aid and CalFresh. For the income portion, would I combine those two to come out with my income? Or do I just do I just include the cash aid? It's a great question. Um, I I would say for these purposes, I think you can include it. Um, there will be a section, and we can even look into that um, in kind of the application process potentially. But um, you will have to like prove your income, um, and uh, I think there's a section for um, declaring those benefits that you receive. Um, that's a great question. Let me look into that real quick. Um, I'm going to reshare my screen. Does anyone else have any uh, experience with that or any knowledge? That's a great question.
Sorry, give us one second while I get host abilities again so I can screen share once again. Thanks for your patience. I think Heather, you're the host. Uh, okay, do you want Can you send it back to Clark? <laughs> Thank you, Gowen um, participants, Heather. You're on mute. Yeah, I'm there. For some reason, it's not letting me transfer it to Clark, but I can see that it was given to me. Hold on, let me try something else. Oh, I can share my screen again. All right, is that good? Yeah. Perfect. So, um, so again, you can look into the unit itself, and depending on how many people are in the household, the income range will change. You can go down. Uh, household maximum income, occupancy, all these details. You can even see the leasing agent. So this is helpful for uh, case managers. So if a client um, needs a little bit extra assistance or, um, or if a client has the time to reach out to someone directly, their information is here on the right side. It gives their office hours and it also gives information as, the, as to when the last update was. So usually the units that were uh, updated the most recent um, will be up top on the uh, list when you search in Dahlia. But then you can also see when the lottery is happening. This one is November 10th, which means to get your application in, oh, actually, it says application deadline, which would be today uh, at 5 p.m. So make sure you understand when these deadlines are, what the requirements are, and then you go in here. Uh, you must have an account already to uh, get started on your application, uh, and then you can even pick out of the four languages which one you prefer. So I'm going to go back to rent here real quick. And you can even get help calculating your income. Uh, so here, uh, this is where you'll be able to, as you asked uh, Melissa, Put in your CalWORKs, your CalFresh. Um, if you get disability or social security, we'll be able to put that information in as well, and then your wages um, alongside of it. You also can put in your household size, 
your pre-taxed income. And then based on that, so let's just say household of four with one child under, oops, with one child under the age of six and say a family is making three grand a month. It shows you four, it shows you um, all of the listings that match your focus. So I think this is a very helpful tool, especially to see which ones are available to you. Um, and being able to apply to those and focus on those directly. Are there any questions before I move on to the uh, affordable housing online portal? Yeah, did you say these were all uh, below market rate apartments in the listing? Yeah. Oh, okay, thanks. Any other questions? Um, yes. Yeah. So you would say include the CalFresh into that income with the cash aid as well? Yes, exactly. So okay. thank uh, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Ann Hart, just Clark, Ann Hart put something in the chat about including CalWorks, <clears throat> but not including CalFresh. Ann Hart, do you um, want to speak to that? Yeah, so I've worked with families and we've applied for other families through Dahlia and you do not include CalFresh because CalFresh is just food assistance and you cannot pay rent or utilities with food assistance, but then CalWorks, you can pay rent and utilities with that. So um, any food assistance you do not include as an income unless you're Perfect. receiving disability or unemployment or CalWORKs. Yes, you could include that. Great, thank Excellent. you. Excellent, thanks for sharing that. Any other questions or points on Dahlia? I had I had a quick question, but I don't see the and we don't have to take time on it. I was just curious why that um, there was one listing for an apartment and it said that there was only one unit available, but it gave a range for rent and it, the range was like fifteen hundred dollars. So it was either the rent is twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred. Have you seen that where rather than just having a one rental one cost per month, it's actually a range. Yeah, I have only seen the income range. Yeah, um, that, which makes you sense. You can see it over here. Yeah, um, I don't know. Is it one of the units that I have looked at um, during this? Yeah, but we don't. Share, we don't have or? to go back to it. Yeah, it was one of the first ones that showed up. Interesting. Um, yeah, I will get back to you. I'll have a an answer for that for next week's. Okay, two. cool, thanks. Uh, that works out. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Um, all right, so the next one that we're going to look at real quick is affordablehousing.com. Yeah. Um, so affordablehousing.com used to go by the name of gosection8.com, and is, it is the largest and most trusted source for all affordable housing properties and programs in the US. So you can search by county in the search bar up here, or you can go down and because it has my location, it knows that I will be uh, most interested in rentals in San Francisco County. And so for these purposes, I will start by showing how to navigate it um, through San Francisco. So on the left side, as it loads, you can see a map of the city and county of San Francisco. Up here to the left, you can click on schools that are in the area, which I think is a really helpful tool as well. Um, and then you can see all of these price ranges. So 
if there's a specific neighborhood in the city that you're interested, you can zoom in and check out the available rentals in that neighborhood. Or you can see here that it says 181 rentals, affordable housing in San Francisco. And you can just scroll down and see which ones are available. Now, if your family has a certain number of um, people in the household that you need, say, three bedrooms for, you can click and see that there are 36 rentals for three bedroom apartments. You can also uh, make a minimum, oops, a minimum or a maximum uh, rental range. And you can also click on how many bathrooms. You can also click on property type, condo, single family house, apartment, or townhouse. And there are also certain filters for in-unit washer and dryer, balcony, and different amenities um, like pet friendly, uh, age restrictions, and things like that. So say we're looking for a three bedroom, you scroll through and look at the available units and their prices. And as Peyton mentioned before, uh, other than, or um, rather than units like, uh, or websites, sorry, uh, like Craigslist or Facebook, these, um, are usually put up by rental agencies um, or leasing agents. And so they will be a little bit more expensive than we'll see from other units. Um, but this is generally how to navigate as well. It would be best to sign up and be able to sign in. And just like Dahlia, this is for owners and renters. Um, so you can also, as we mentioned, with Saha and uh, and Dahlia, there are public housing wait lists that you can also uh, look into. They have Section 8 availability as well. It tells you what date it was opened on. Um, and then I don't see... Um, where it says the deadline to apply. Um, let's see. But if you click on the property, we'll have a close date. And in this case, it is open indefinitely. Are there any questions about affordablehousing.com? Excellent. We will keep going. So Saha, as mentioned, uh, is also uh, this is more specifically for the East Bay but um, public housing units um, and lotteries uh, that are below market rate. So up here at the top, apply for housing. You can apply for Saha housing. Uh, and then here, as you come down, you can see it. Berkeley, Oakland, Concord. And the options are a bit more limited, but um, here's a link to apply, and this is where you would put in uh, your information. And just like what we talked about with Dahlia, uh, it will have a place to put in your income and, um, and some of the public benefits that you may or may not receive. Um, and through that, it will let you know whether or not you qualify 
for these public housing units. Any questions on Saha? Is the address of the property included on each available housing? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, let me go back real quick. Yeah. So it will be listed under the page of the unit itself. So here, for example, it's 2020 Durant Avenue in Berkeley. Um, if we go to another one, it'll be right under the, the listing. Right here. And it gives eligibility requirements, um, as well as a brief descriptor of the neighborhood when it was built. Uh, close amenities like public transportation, public library, things like that, and how many apartments, studios, uh, and units overall that they have. Any other questions? Excellent. So now we're going to move on to apartments.com. And this, uh, these are low income, or these are below market rate places or uh, at market rate places um, available to all types of individuals in uh, San Francisco or wherever you are looking. So just like I did, you can put the city or county, which you're list, uh, looking for, and very similar to affordablehousing.com. Up here at the top, you've got price, uh, number of bedrooms, uh, type of unit, apartment, townhouse, or otherwise. And then here you've got a map of all of the places listed right here. So if I was also interested in Oakland, by chance, I can put in Oakland, California. And now all of these will pop up. If there's a specific neighborhood, you can put downtown Oakland. And it'll be even more specific for you here. So as you can see, there are more uh, apartments available on apartments.com as there were on affordable housing online, um, as well as Saha. Uh, so this is a nice tool to use for kind of a general sense of what the market looks like. As Heather brought up before, these will have ranges um, of uh, rent. And so these will depend on studio, one bedroom or two bedroom. This is what it looks like here. So I'm going to go back to San Francisco since Compass is located in San Francisco and most of our families um, also are looking for places here in the city. And just to focus on our part of the city in particular. I'll start with the financial district. And so here you can see a much more focused search. And so these buildings will have um, the available bedrooms and the available units. This one in particular looks like it's just one unit, which makes it a little bit easier. You can click on it. You see that there's still a monthly rent range. And so in that case, it would be best to contact the property first, uh, reaching out. I've found that it's pretty easy to call these numbers and get in touch with uh, 
an office manager or usually not a leasing agent, at least right away, but at least the property manager um, or, um, yeah, person who works the front desk and they can direct you um, to whomever you need to speak with. It'll have the uh, kind of basic information of the unit uh, and what is included in the rent. And again, you can contact and then here are the community amenities as well. This is also good to know, um, an application fee. Um, places like Dahlia and Saha um, do not have an application fee, um, I believe. Um, if someone has other information, please share that, but I don't believe they have application fees. Um, I think it depends on the building that you apply for. Through Dahlia, they don't charge uh, fees, but then once they once you get selected, the building actually sometimes collect fees for their own um, application. Excellent. That's great to know. Thank you. Um, and then in the case of apartments.com, you will have it at the bottom here um, with the application fee. So plenty of good information um, to kind of inform you of what's nearby, what amenities the property has itself, some of the transportation, muni lines, um, and then has these scores. So it is a walker's paradise, um, helpful for public transportation. It's fairly bikeable. And it is a busy area, no airports, um, but a lot of businesses. So that is apartments.com. Um, and then you can look through photos of the property as well. Anyone have any questions about apartments.com specifically? Excellent. I will be moving on. Um, last but not least um, is Craigslist. So as Peyton mentioned, Craigslist, um, you don't have to um, have an account um, or you don't have to uh, rather pay for a subscription to post available units on there. So that can make it cheaper um, for the property owner or whomever to uh, post something, but it also means that they aren't being monitored in the same way as these other websites monitor these units. So there is a bit higher risk for uh, a scam, but uh, yeah, in similar way, these units are posted um, and you can um, look into it. There isn't necessarily as much information as we just saw with apartments.com, but a brief um, descriptor and then um, it will have the uh, contact information, although I'm not seeing where that is right now, uh, but you'll be able to contact the uh, owner directly um, and investigate kind of how soon you be, you might be able to tour, what the availability is, um, and other information. Um, it will be more imperative in situations like these to be able to have a list of questions for the property manage, the property manager or the owner, um, just because there is less information as there is for apartments.com. Um, but again, you can find cheaper places uh, in some instances and um, better deals overall.
So I'm going to stop the share right there. Um, that's a brief overview. And again, um, Peyton and I are here just to uh, show kind of the basics of this search. Um, so a couple things to keep in mind is there are lotteries um, and wait lists for affordable housing through the city of San Francisco or in the East Bay, Saha and Dahlia. Apartments.com is a useful source um, to be able to find uh, a kind of wider range of available apartments in whatever neighborhood or city or county that you're looking for. And then Craigslist is um, many times the cheapest alternative for market rate housing. Um, and you can find good deals, um, but you should also be uh, more careful with scams um, in those. And for all of them, making an account and monitoring them regularly is the best way to find whatever place you're looking for. Does anyone have any questions for the two of us um, before we end part one today? Um, I want to thank all of you guys for your participation and questions so far. Yeah, Ileana. Yeah, this is more of an in-house question. Um, do you know if housing navigators are walking families through these or like helping them fill out the applications or do the families receive like a list of these resources and go like scroll on their own kind of thing? Yeah, good question. Um, does anyone have an answer to that? Because um, I personally do not. I remember Natalie saying that they don't really do that. Like Natalie, who's does um, works with people who have the pro who are problem solving status, right? She doesn't really help them look for affordable housing. Um, they're more just like getting them into a place, but they're not like just helping them with their search. Yeah. Got it. Okay, thank you. And as a uh, family resource center uh, case managers, Peyton and I um, can help support people with this. Um, we have full caseloads, and so we aren't always um, given the time during the week to be able to search through this. But um, I, I know I have at least um, scheduled appointments with, a, with clients, and that is available for anyone uh, who is interested and would like to schedule an appointment with me. Um, to go over some of this or have me help support with an application. Um, in next week's session, we will also be um, presenting a referral for uh, programs that help specifically with housing applications, um, but that is more for when they've already done the search and found the uh, property. So um, yeah, at this point, I'm not sure if anyone on the, if uh, SF Home is working with uh, clients directly, kind of showing them how to navigate the search itself. Um, but that uh, that's part of the reason why we wanted to do this workshop series is to put those tools in people's hands um, and offer our services, the two of us, um, to be able to uh, help clients with that if they do need more, uh, more support. But thank you, that was a good question. Anyone else have any questions or comments at this time? I don't have a question, but it was interesting to see the affordablehousing.com resource. Um, I'll definitely share with my families. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Um, and before we go, I just want to thank uh, our CCSS team for uh, showing out. I appreciate your interest and support. Um, and uh, yeah, I think all of us are uh, trying to improve our understanding of housing as it becomes more and more of a necessity these days for all programs at Compass, not just our uh, access point and our uh, housing stability 
programs. But uh, yeah, I appreciate the support and hopefully we can kind of all come together and uh, help our clients and, and families in San Francisco find affordable housing. Great, thank you both for hosting these. Yeah, um, hope to see some of you um, later today at 3 p.m. for the uh, Spanish workshop and then next Thursday at 11 as well for part two where we talk about how to apply, how to talk to landlords. Right. We'll be there. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thanks for you too. Bye. Thanks. Bye.